Good evening, all, and welcome. It's a Monday evening, and we are back with yet another um, interesting presentation and some more IVF cases. And of course, we are also here to answer some of your questions. So glad to be here back with Dr. Halina Strelko. You can see her right here. Hello, Dr. Strelko. How are you feeling tonight? Wonderful to have you back. This is our third or fourth. I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly now. Uh, but I'm glad that you are back with us and we'll present uh, more cases. How are you feeling tonight? Thank you very much. I feel well. <laughs> A little bit... Uh... Uh, not good weather today in Kiev, so it is always not good mood, but now all is fine. I am really happy to be to be with you, and I am happy that uh, people come in, and th thank you, for, uh, thank you to all participants, to all people who take his time to, to listen in this webinar. Thank you so much indeed. It's definitely this time of uh, year, November. It's always um, the, the, the weather is not so great, but I'm glad that we are able to be here. And so we should stay positive. That's what we can do right now, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yes. And of course, uh, as you know, we will start with uh, Dr. Strako's uh, presentation. She prepared two cases and she will talk about getting pregnant after plus 38 advanced maternal age and of course as always there will be time for your questions so go ahead if you have them prepared you can type those in right now but if not you can always do it afterwards um, remember this is going to be recorded and uh, I just also want to mention that as you know um, since this uh, September sorry we have started success stories uh, this is a project that uh, uh, we are definitely very uh, proud of simply because we see how many different, different cases um, can and how many different cases and, of course, how many uh, success stories uh, we've seen so far. So it's amazing for me because there are so many uh, different uh, strategies, different approaches. And uh, the main focus here is definitely to make it happen. And, uh, of course, tonight we will hear some more um, of those and I'm glad that you are here don't hesitate to ask your questions and I believe this is time to start our presentation let me just also mention that if you haven't uh, participated in the previous webinars with Dr. Strelko uh, let me just introduce her show so she is the uh, the the IVF expert, uh, she's located in Kiev, as she's mentioned, and uh, she's the um, also co-founder uh, of I've met located in Kiev, as I've mentioned, right? So that is it from me. Thank you so much. And let's get going with our presentation tonight. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So thank much you so much. For your kind presentation and we will start. So today we will be talking about uh, late reproductive age and I will show you two cases, um, more or less similar profile of patient, but a little bit different approach. And probably um, I will try to explain one, one, uh, one of this approach is not very good uh, and why another one is more successful. So, uh, first case, my patient's name Irina, 46 years old. She became my patient in 2021. And uh, the main clinical diagnosis is advanced reproductive age. We know that after 42, 43 years old, unfortunately, in most of cases, it is quite difficult to receive own eggs, to produce embryo from these eggs. Uh, but but uh, she has done one IVF attempt in another clinic before to come in our clinic in 2020, so one year ago, when she has 45 years old. And uh, in previous clinic, they receive quite good number of eggs, eight eggs in total. Uh, unfortunately, only one poor quality blastocyst and the genetic test, next generation sequences test, uh, show that this embryo, unfortunately, is abnormal. Uh, so she has morphologically normal egg. Uh, morphologically normal quality, uh, normal um, sperm count and quality. And 
I proposed to her uh, due to these previous attempts, uh, egg donation program. But she she said that no, only own eggs. She she don't want to try with donors' eggs uh, because on good ovarian reserve and because on last year they receive okay poor quality but as minimum one blastocyst. So we decide to go to the stimulation. Uh, she has um, absolutely normal hormonal levels. She has quite good IMH level for her age, 1.1 nanogram per milliliter. Uh, she was negative for infections, coagulation test, karyotype, other tests were normal. Uh, her husband has also absolutely normal uh, sperm count and morphology, normal DNA fragmentation rate, normal karyotype, so all was apparently good. She was a little bit overweight, body mass index 31.3, but otherwise all was fine. So we decide to do with her natural cycle IVF because on uh, low number of blastocysts, so decide to try with less stimulation, probably uh, waiting to receive better quality eggs and doing if we receive as minimum one blastocyst to do the genetic test of this embryo and cryotransfer in natural cycle. So we receive one egg, mature. Uh, she has done fertilization. Me and my patients were very happy. And uh, after 72 hours of developing embryo arrest, unfortunately. Okay. For one egg, it may happen sometime, even with young reproductive age. So we decide with her to move to another strategy. Probably try the new stimulation, use the high dosage of FSH, add in LH, because we know that in late reproductive age, Normally, there is a lack of LH receptors and LH activity. LH is necessary for good final egg maturation. We decide to add also growth hormone to use special sperm selection methods. And also, if we receive good quality embryos, to do the genetic test on this embryo and cryotransfer in natural cycle. So, uh, so, mm, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Mm, so, uh, we receive, we stimulate 10 days our patient, and unfortunately, uh, only one follicle growing. I have seen several follicles, but only one follicle uh, give uh, the reaction to this stimulation and we receive one egg, one more, it was mature egg. Uh, we receive good fertilization and the same story, 72 hours arrest of development and unfortunately protocol was closed. So uh, what can we do in this case? Uh, the day of her egg collection, I detect, uh, I'm sorry, I should move a little bit uh, this slide. So, uh, the day of egg collection, I have seen uh, three, um, I have seen three follicle in right ovary and uh, two, three in left ovary. Uh, it was like antral follicles, which do, uh, I expect that they will grow the first stimulation, but we decide to do the second stimulation in the same cycle, like double stimulation. So one day after egg retrieval, we restart the new stimulation with the mostly the same medication, the same at LH, growth hormone, uh, special sperm selection method, etc. And in this case, uh, we receive much better uh, quality, 
Oh, oh, I'm sorry, it is not moving well. Why we decide to do like that? Uh, there is now a theory of multiple follicle waves. So uh, now we know that follicles grow in by groups, by waves. And uh, in some patients, we can have two waves during the cycle, one in the follicular phase, another one in luteal phase. In some patients, we have uh, three waves and uh, we should follow these waves, waves and it permit us time to time to receive much better response if we will choose the um, right wave. In follicular phase, we can have not very good wave, but after ov ovulation, sometimes we can see, we can detect that there is a bigger wave, bigger number of follicles. We can see that and start stimulation in luteal phase. So in this case, we restart our stimulation in uh, luteal phase two, uh, two days after the first egg retrieval, and we receive quite good response in this case. Uh, so that, yeah. Uh, so uh, if we compare the stimulation in follicular and luteal phase, we can see that uh, in this work, for example, they comparing the uh, egg donor stimulation, the same egg donor and stimulation beginning in the first phase of cycle and in luteal phase of cycle. And uh, they, uh, the author of this work detect that the results are mostly the same, quality of eggs absolutely the same. So we can, we can use that to, Mm, to follow the best wave and stimulate in the best period of, of the cycle. And thanks to that, we uh, mm, receive good response in this uh, case, in the, our third uh, cycle. Yeah, uh, It was quite big, those of uh, gonadotrophin 3000 international unity. The duration was 11 days, and we received in total eight follicles, seven eggs, six was mature, and one was GV, but okay, it, it may happen sometime. Uh, our protocol, you can see here, good number of eggs, good fertilization from six mature eggs, five were fertilized, uh, we receive uh, Finally, even with this intact, we receive embryos, six embryos, and only one morula we detect in 120 hours. This this embryo, other embryos arrest, and this embryo arrest in six days of stimulation. So, unfortunately, uh, all our interventions uh, to change the protocol, to change the medication to change the fertilization method, to, to use the stimulation in second phase of cycle, they improved the response. And the third stimulation was the most successful. We receive quite a good number of eggs, we receive good fertilization, but unfortunately we don't receive viable embryo. So this is the main problem of stimulation in late reproductive age that we can change a lot of things, but uh, we cannot influence the, the crucial problem which produce the bad embryo quality. Uh, so uh, why we have such problem? Because we have two wave to decrease um, the quality of eggs within late reproductive age. There are different molecular drivers of developmental arrest in the human uh, embryo. Uh, in these scientific works, it was shown uh, all these mechanisms uh, which can uh, um, produce the arrest of development of embryo. And uh, these uh, factors and mechanisms uh, are due to 
male partner and female partner as well because as we know in late reproductive age in most of case male partner also has quite late age yeah more than 45 so all these factors together uh, give uh, us the result that embryo may arrest and uh, Another mechanism, as we have talked in previous webinars, uh, this is the genetic mechanism. It means that there are abnormal number and quality of uh, chromosomes in nucleus. Uh, when we are comparing the um, arrest human embryos uh, and developing human embryos, we can see that in developing embryos, uh, the probability of genetic abnormality is less than in uh, arrested embryo. And more interesting that in arrested embryo, we can detect mostly what we call complex abnormality. It means that not only one chromosome is wrong, but different. So all this mechanism does not work. It is not like... Uh, by chance something wrong yeah like in developing embryo and if it is only one chromosome problem sometime this problem may be corrected by itself but when it is complex abnormality it means that uh, all side and embryo is not able to correct all these disorders uh, and if we will see the statistic ivf outcome and age we can see also that with all eggs after 42 years old, uh, the probability of uh, live birth per started cycle is quite low. And 43 and more, it is like less than 2-3%. So um, unfortunately, we should know that after 40 to 43 years old, the success rate is very, very poor and only 0.2% of women theoretically have more or less good chance to become pregnant and have lived birth after 42, 43 years old with all eggs. So uh, uh, my next clinical case uh, is about another patient. Uh, she has more or less the same profile. Her name is Sophie, 46 years old. She became my patient in 2019. And also the main clinical di diagnosis was advanced reproductive age. And uh, she has second marriage. Uh, and uh, one healthy baby in her first marriage. And two years ago, she decided to, to, to become pregnant, and unfortunately, it is not working. Her IMH level was also not so bad, 0 0.9. For this age, it is excellent. Uh, she was a little bit overweight, body mass index 41 kilogram per meter per square meter. No infertility treatment before. Husband has normal sperm parameters. So... Uh, Okay, from the beginning, I discussed with her the egg donation program because, uh, as we have seen in most of cases, unfortunately, it is only one realistic option. So, uh, but the main question about egg donation is how do you select your egg donors? Who are all these people? how they are investigated is uh, the girl which i will choose will be nice will be good uh, so mostly these kind of questions and i would like to show that we have really very very strict selection of egg donors uh, first of all we try to contact with them by different methods and only 20% from all these leads pass the prima, primary interview because all these leads then they should call and our call center uh, speaking with them and only 20% are accepted for further investigation. 
then from uh, from these 20 percent only 30 percent uh, come to the clinic by different reason because uh, probably they change their mind or because we we decide after listening the interview that it is not good candidate so only 30 percent after the first examination only 50 percent uh, pass examination and uh, has quite good result to start the program so we can say that only 3.3 percent of all our leads if we can say like that became donors so we have very very strict selection and uh, we have very good egg donors uh, results high blastulation rate, high fertilization, high survival rates of our eggs. Mm, so um, uh, we discuss with my patient that, okay, we have chosen nice uh, egg donor from our database. Uh, we have quite good choice actually. Mm, from 2020 till 2021, we increase twice the our database of egg donors, so there is really a good choice. And uh, we decide to to choose this girl for egg donation program. We fertilize these eggs and receive good result. Uh, five excellent blastocysts. You can see that uh, for AB, five AA, and also we have done the genetic test, and only one was abnormal. Other embryo uh, were absolutely normal. So we decide to do the cryo transfer. And by standard way, has done with the replacement hormonal therapy protocol. Uh, standard protocol, 8 mg of estradiol, 800 mg of progesterone. Unfortunately, endometrium always was not so good. 6-7 mm and two consecutive attempts, HCG was negative. And, uh, okay, embryo are normal, all is fine, so what, what to do? We decide with her to do the natural cycle protocol, uh, cryo protocol. It means that we following the grow, growth of her follicle, looking uh, when this follicle will be ready to ovulate, uh, controlling the hormonal levels. And when uh, we can see the ovulation, we count in 120 hours and doing the transfer. Why? Because uh, during the natural cycle, there are different types of estrogens uh, circulating in the blood, and sometimes it may give much better result on endometrium quality and sickness. And that's true that we have uh, mm, a very good endometrium in this third protocol. And uh, in this case, we received the positive HCG result. And it was really a good moment when we have done the first ultrasound and have seen that uh, she has pregnancy. Uh, patient was very, very happy. And like... Uh, take home message at the end of my presentation, I would like to say that the probability to achieve a viable and genetically normal blastocyst, unfortunately, is very, very low after 42, 43 years old. And the best treatment option for advanced reproductive age is still egg donation, even in case of good ovarian reserve and apparently good egg quality uh, in uh, healthy women. But unfortunately, the quality of eggs in most of cases is not so good. Uh, in some cases, um, 
it is important to follow the natural cycle protocol for the um, transfer of frozen embryos. And in our clinic, most of the um, cycle of uh, cryotransfer are done uh, with the natural cycle because the hormonal level is different. Uh, for example, we are measuring always the progesterone level before the transfer. And in natural cycle, it is twice higher than in artificial cycle. So in all cases where it is possible, we try to do the transfer in natural cycle, even for egg donation program. And it is really working better in some cases. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. I will be happy to answer all your questions. Um, I see that there are some questions. Yes, there are, of course. Oh thank you so much, Dr. Helena, for uh, presenting those two cases. Definitely, again, as always, interesting ones. And I think that uh, many patients will find this useful, as always, as well. And now it is time for your questions. So don't be shy. If you have anything you can share right now, you can uh, type the questions in because Dr. Svelko is right here for you to help you out with uh, any of your questions, of course. And they are coming. I see that. So don't worry, Dr. Helena. There are, I'm sure there will be more questions here. And uh, let's have a look. The first question is in from Lily. How can AMH levels vary? Is it good to check it a couple of times during a month or not necessary? Uh, thank you very much. Excellent question. Recently, I have seen the article about AMH level variability. It is a very interesting question because first, AMH level, uh, it is thinking that it is stable, but finally, it may change during the cycle 20-30% in different phase of cycle. Uh, it is uh, increased when LH is higher and decrease when LH is lower. Um, second point that uh, from cycle to cycle also may be variability 20-30%. And also important things about IMH level that um, the level that patient has in blood circulation and level that you receive in your analysis, it may be different and influenced by machine uh, which pr produce this analysis, uh, reagents which uh, doing uh, with the help of which are done this analysis. Also, pre-analytical uh, etap, it means that if your blood before to put in this machine was frozen or heating or not put in two, three hours and waiting, storing for a couple of days or something else, it may affect uh, even twice uh, the result. So, of course, you can check IMH level Mm, even three times per, per cycle. But as for me, better option to do the same day ultrasound, doing antral follicular count. It means count how many antral follicles do you have in your ovary in this moment. Take blood for IMH and see the both. If both results are more or less saying about the same, I think it's enough to understand your real ovarian reserve. If, for example, you have bigger antral follicular count and less IMH level, probably necessary to take in consideration rise the antral follicular count. Also, there is a very interesting work about that, that uh, they comparing people with, uh, how to say, high IMH and low antral follicular count and opposite, and show that if there is this discordance, better to take in consideration the visual number of antral follicles. So probably uh, that's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course, definitely interesting. Thank you for explaining. Uh, Lily, thanks a lot indeed. And let's have a look. Okay, there are more questions coming up right here. Uh, there are three parts from the very same patient. Let's have a look. I'm 43, my AMH is 1.01, .01, and 
sorry, I did 10 IVF rounds until now. Only one was successful. What is your suggestion for my age for next IVF? I tried a donation last month, but it wasn't successful as well. Anything you can advise? Uh, thank you for your question. Yeah, it's a difficult situation because 10 IVF attempts, okay, to understand better the situation necessary to see how many eggs uh, was produced uh, were produced during all these attempts the percentage of fertilization the percentage of blastulation if you has done the genetic test of embryos if you have done for example the specific test of endometrium receptivity uh, because, for example, if all these attempts or most of these attempts, you have excellent embryo with normal genetic and, uh, for example, uh, does not test your endometrium, probably will be better to go to the testing of, of endometrium receptivity. About egg donation, also necessary to see how many eggs uh, was used. Uh, we used how many blastocysts, the quality of these blastocysts, protocol of preparation. So um, like that is difficult to say something exact. Probably I, in this situation, I tried the egg donation. I try to um, to see the endometrium receptivity and try to prepare your endometrium in natural cycle. But necessary to have more details to understand the, the situation. That's understandable, of course. Thank you so much for uh, sharing and for your question. Remember, there's a way for you to get in touch with uh, Dr. Kalina and her team that I met, and I'm sure they will be able to help you with some more details. Uh, after we finish, you will be redirected to the site, to the profile of Dr. Kalina on our site, and there is an option to contact as well. Uh, so you can use that or just simply get in touch uh, directly with uh, Dr. Kalina, I mean, uh, the whole team at I met, of course. All right, and there's a thank you from uh, the patient for you right here as well. Okay, now we have a question from Roman. Okay, thank you for that question as well. You have experience using growth hormone to increase male, in male fertility? Mm, thank you for your question. Unfortunately, me personally, no. I don't work in with uh, male uh, par partner, mostly our urologist working with them, but um, he does not use in growth hormone. We are using uh, sometimes the stimulation with FSH and HCG, uh, mostly in case of azospermia, uh, and sometimes we receive couple of sperm cells after this stimulation but growth hormone unfortunately no i have no this experience with male uh, partners all right thank you for the clarification thank you for the question and of course there's a thank you from the patient right here as well okay let's uh, have a look another question what is the best number of days with progesterone before frozen ever transfer uh, good question. Thank you very much. Uh, there are also different publications about that. Some of them say that, okay, it is maybe five, maybe six. Like if we start progesterone on Monday, we should do the transfer Sunday. Oh, sorry, Saturday. Uh, but another publication say that, okay, better to follow 120 hours. And uh, a recent publication of Humaidan say that, for example, if you are using natural cycle IVF, two hours after HCG triggering your progesterone rising. It means that if you would like to do, uh, you have natural cycle, for example, and you would like to do your transfer Saturday, uh, your trigger should be done late evening Sunday, previous Sunday. So like not uh, one day before, like for ovulation, like for triggering for IVF, but a little bit later because progesterone rise uh, more quickly and uh, earlier. For egg retrieval, we are doing 36 uh, years before 
36 hours before egg retrieval, but for uh, cryo embryo transfer, we are doing less. We're doing just a couple of hours before you start your progesterone. Uh, that's why uh, should be 120 hours of progesterone in case, in normal case. But if you has done the endometrium receptivity with ERA test, sometime necessary to do 140 hours or less, like 72 hours. So, but it is depend on the result of your test. Wonderful. Again, thank you so much for the question and thank you for helping out. More questions are coming in. Let's see another interesting one. I know there is a condition when FSH receptors are irresponsive to FSH. Where can I test this condition? Can it be treated in some way? Uh, very good uh, question. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's true that it is described like... Uh, FSH receptor mutation, um, and they are not receptive to standard FSH therapy. So sometimes we can use for stimulation HCG, sometimes we can use uh, LH for stimulation, and uh, unfortunately it is impossible to treat because it is congenital condition, but we can Mm, try to use if, for example, own ovary working and sometimes you have own ovulation, it means that your uh, body detect your own FSH. It means that for stimulation, you can use uh, protocols like um, anti-estrogens, which will produce the rise of your own FSH. And after adding something like low dose HCG or LH, Sometimes it, it, it is possible that uh, it may be helpful. Um, about testing, uh, some genetic laboratories specialize to this test and they can uh, detect the mutation of FSH or LH receptors. Um, our laboratory unfortunately does not do this test, but uh, I know a couple of laboratories where you can do that for sure. Thank you. Definitely interesting one. Uh, thanks a lot indeed. And as always, there's a thank you for this question, but also the previous one. Thank you for a great answer, as you can see. Okay, next question. Let me just have a look. Lily has another one. Is there any way to limit risk factors such as high blood pressure when receiving a transfer at advanced maternal age? Yeah, this is also a very good question, and, uh, and uh, it is true that in advanced maternal age, uh, the, the main risk it is uh, obstetric complications, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, thrombosis, uh, placenta previa, etc., etc. About prevention, um, uh, if a woman has, um, she's overweight, will be good option to decrease the weight. Uh, second point, to see insulin resistance before the treatment, be because insulin re resistance provoke uh, uh, the concentration of adipocyte uh, in belly. And this provoke uh, increase the probability of insulin resistance and high blood pressure. So it is like circle. And uh, during the pregnancy, progesterone increase insulin resistance. So if uh, in late reproductive age, woman has abnormal weight, will be good option to to try to decrease it. At it will be the best prophylaxis of high blood pressure. Also, less medication uh, women will receive, uh, better it will be for her health finally, yeah, in this case. So try to do in natural cycle. And also there is a scientific works which say that um, natural corpus luteum produce some specific substances and growth factors which improve the probability to go with the pregnancy till term and artificial cycle sometime may increase the probability of high blood pressure. So probably like that. 
and all methods which improve the blood placental blood circulation also will decrease the probability of high blood pressure. All right, thank you, Lily. Uh, again, an interesting question. Um, and let's have a look. Astrid has a question. Do you offer the option of non-anonymous egg donors? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, in Ukraine, we have uh, not very, very strict legislation. So as clinic, uh, we, um, we have no right to give information, personal information about uh, our egg donor. But uh, we have agency who are not clinic and they can provide this information and give you more, um, how to say, full profile of egg donor. Understood. Thank you for a clarification then. And let's have a look. That's taking dose of estradiol and estri from create fibroids. Um, good question. Thank you very much. Um, finally, uh, fibroid is um, estrogen dependent and progesterone also dependent uh, benign uh, tumor. So if you will take during long time and big dosage, probably per se it will not provoke, but if you have little fibroid, it will help to this fibroid to increase the size. But uh, you know that the preparation protocol lasts normally two weeks, three weeks, but pregnancy lasts nine months. It mean, and during the pregnancy, fibroids uh, growing much faster than during the preparation, whatever dosage you are using. So uh, also the main problem is not uh, if you have fibroid, not uh, the preparation, but pregnancy, which will produce the growing of this fibroid. Okay. Thank you. Um, and now might be our final question. So, of course, as always, if you have more, you know what to do. I'm sure there will be more, um, but I just want to encourage everyone. So we have more questions for uh, Dr. Strelko. And here's another one. Some IVF centers suggest to do BCL6 test with Cooper Surgical. Do you think it is important? Mm. Yeah, we can think about that. Uh, in our clinic, we don't use this method, so I have no personal experience. But, uh, okay, necessary to talking with your doctor. You know, with uh, fibroid, there are different, uh, different options, different approaches. Uh, some doctors propose to do surgical intervention. Some doctors propose to use medication to shrink a little bit fibroid before the, the further preparation. Uh, there is very interesting method uh, named HIFU method when um, some specific ultrasound, um, Doppler ultrasound, is uh, increase the temperature inside this fibroid and well, after this fibroid shrinking. So different approach exists and necessary to see the exact situation, the, the place where situated your fibroid, the blood circulation, the, um, is this fibroid close to endometrium and if there is a big risk to harm endometrium during the treatment. So. A lot of things uh, which should be taken in consideration. Of course, again, thanks so much for yet another interesting question. And um, well, there is one more question that is a bit of a longer question. Before that, there are thank yous from previous patients, as you can see. And Susan has added one more. Mm -hmm. I'm 39 from Scotland. Embers are not gen genetically tested as standard in my clinic. During my first cycle of IVF in August, I had 13 follicles, six eggs, four fertilized, one day five blastocysts, three BB transferred but failed, and two four AA blastocysts were frozen on day six. I have had two frozen embryo transfers, but these both failed as well. Are they six embers less likely to implant due to slow growing? Based on the above, would you advise I try again with my own eggs or look for a donor? 
Ah, good question. Thank you very much. Um, as for me, there are a couple of things which will be good to clarify. For example, 13 follicles and only six eggs. Um, okay, why? because uh, follicles were not appropriate size or because uh, the trigger was done earlier or because you have some uh, some problem of egg maturation uh, and for example when uh, eggs are not mature enough uh, we receive less eggs yeah so probably for the stimulation will be good option in second stimulation to postpone one today to give probably bigger dosage to give probably double triggering and increase the egg maturation because when we receive um, there is a nuclear maturation that, which can be detected uh, with microscope and there is a cytoplasmic egg maturation which cannot be unfortunately detected like that but these produce less fertilization if your cytoplasm is not mature enough uh, you will have not very good fertilization you will have slow embryo development and probably no very good uh, blastocyst quality so as for me if it is only your first ivf attempt i i prefer to try another stimulation uh, necessary of course to see your first protocol but will be good to modify to probably increase the dosage increase the duration doing something like double triggering and try to receive more eggs uh, to see if you will have better blastocyst formation rate probably to use calcium ionophore after fertilization to improve fertilization and embryo development and uh, about day six embryo the probability of implantation uh, it's true a little bit less uh, likely because they has little bit more percentage of genetically abnormal uh, genetically abnormality but also it is not the rule because it depends on cultural medium in some mediums embryo growing much faster in some medium blastocysts arrive uh, rising in six days so this question necessary to see with your embryologist and and also if for example your egg collection is at 2 p.m for example it means that fertilization will be at 4 or 5 p.m it means that your uh, six day finally not six day but like end of fifth day so this is necessary to see with laboratory uh, the more often in this laboratory with this medium uh, blastocyst formation on 120 hours or 140 hours so all these things necessary to discuss in with them to understand better what happened but as for me i try second stimulation in your case thank you for another advice uh, i Hope, Suzanne, that that was, of course, helpful for you. Thank you so much for sharing. And there's another question from Natalia. 41, one blastocyst on average after each stimulation, PDTA or not? Some say not. Let the nature decide. What is your opinion? Very good question. I have mostly every day such questions from my patients. Uh, look, uh, PGTA, this is a method which does not improve blastocyst, okay? It is the method which permit to select something and to transfer in first uh, attempt best embryo, second attempt a little bit worse, etc., etc. So in case on you have only one blastocyst as for me uh, you should be very careful because pgta may give some false positive and false negative errors as any method of testing whatever method you can use you will receive some percentage of uh, mistakes second point that uh, the cells which were taken from embryo um, may be 
not representative about all embryo. It means that uh, the cells which are taken from embryo from trophectoderm, so future placenta, has normally higher percentage of genetic abnormality than cells staying inside of embryo. So uh, if you receive mosaicism or even abnormal result, sometime in some percentage of cases, it may not represent the real situation. And you will, uh, how to say, excard this embryo from further using, but this embryo may have chance to implant and give healthy baby. So as for me, uh, if you have only one embryo and has no very serious reason to do PGD, I prefer to not do it because it may decrease your chance to receive pregnancy. But okay, necessary to see. For example, if you have previously five attempts and in any in each attempt you you has like trisomic baby, or of course, necessary to do the testing. So necessary to see the exact reason why to do the testing. But in such cases, in most of cases, as for me, better not to do the, the uh, PGTA. Also, when you are doing biopsy, sometime uh, if embryo is not 5AA, uh, it may be harmful for this embryo. There are different methods of biopsy, different influence, but finally it may uh, decrease the viability of this embryo. So as for me, I rise, will counsel to you to not do PGTA in such cases. Thank you for that recommendation as well. And again, as you always know, uh, Natalia, thank you for uh, your question. Uh, we will be slowly finishing, okay? So this is the final call for the questions. Go ahead, type those in. And of course, there, there is a thank you from previous patient in regards to your answer. And one more. I am 43. This is from our previous patient as well. What is your recommendation for my next IVF? Use donor eggs or my own eggs. My husband has problem with quality and quantity uh, with sperm. But we have one son and one IVF. I was pregnant with four babies, but lost all of them at 26 weeks. Oh oh, really, really not a good story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's true that uh, at 43 years old, that the probability of uh, pregnancy with own eggs is not so good. It's true. And second point that, um, uh, and this is the continue of this question, yeah. And uh, also um, about husband's uh, sperm parameters, if, for example, very, very bad sperm parameters, but excellent X, X has possibility to restore some problems and some DNA uh, breaks in sperm from sperm side. But if we have problem inside of sperm and inside of cell, as I have shown in my slide, it is increase the probability of embryo arrest and add additional problem to development of embryo. So as for me, uh, at 43 years old, uh, probably better to try with egg donation. Or if you have tried only once, for example, okay, possible to try with another stimulation, try to receive more eggs, uh, and probably one more try with own eggs. But the probability of success is not so high. And necessary to understand that, that whatever uh, intervention we will do, we can only increase the qu quantity of eggs, but in most of cases, we cannot influence the quality. I understood, of course, as well. And thank you from the patient for you right here. And as I mentioned, uh, it looks like that was our final question. So thank you everyone for joining, for your 
definitely interesting questions. And I do hope that it has been useful. Uh, well, actually, no doubt, <laughs> Dr. Circle, how I uh, hope you um, are having also a good session, right? It is a good session after all. Uh, so thank you so much for spending another evening with us. And I just want to mention before we finish that Dr. Circle will be with, uh, back with us on the 1st of December. So next week she'll be back and she will have more cases. So join us, sign up already. And I hope to see you uh, here as well. And uh, Dr. Lena, anything else you would like to add before we finish? Thank you very much for your time, for your attention, and for your excellent questions. It is really interesting, and I was really enjoyed to, to be with you this hour. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And as you can see, amazing uh, comments are right here. Thank you for your great webinar, amazing discussion, and of course, the glasses thing. <laughs> Thank you so much. And as you can see, another one. Thank you for the interesting webinar. Definitely interesting. So thank you so much. And uh, I do, I'm looking forward to our next webinar on the 1st of December, as I've mentioned. So go ahead to my AV offenses uh, where you will be able to sign up for more events. There are still few events left. As you know, we will be finishing in December, uh, but there are some more cases to discuss. So don't hesitate. And of course, this has been recorded. You will be able to find this tomorrow on our site myivfnsys.com mm -hmm. thank you so much uh, see you soon very soon and as you know we will be coming back also tomorrow 7 p.m uk time another uh, topic genetics pgta pgs just go ahead and sign up and i hope to see you here tomorrow and of course on the first of december okay thank you so much take care good night, night.